हॅलो एव्हरीवन आय एम इशिता पवार स्टुडंट ऑफ थर्ड इयर कम्प्युटर डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम के के वाघ इन्स्टिट्यूट ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग अँड रिसर्च नाशिक आय एम हिअर टुडे टू गिव्ह यू प्रेझेंटेशन ऑन द इंटर्नशिप डन बाय मी इन द पिरियड ऑफ जानेवारी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टू फेब्रुवारी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू थ्रू दिस इंटर्नशिप आय एम गायडेड बाय माय मेंटर प्रोफेसर कुशल बिर्ला आय एम इंटरनली ग्रेटफुल टू हिम फॉर हिज वॅल्युएबल सपोर्ट आय हॅव डन माय इंटर्नशिप इन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजन्स अँड मशीन लर्निंग I have also done my project in water quality analysis using machine learning. With this, I'll start my presentation. Data science. Data science is the field of study that combines domain expertise, programming skills and knowledge of mathematics. Machine learning algorithms can predict patterns based on previous experiences. These algorithms find predictable repeatable patterns that can be applied to e-commerce. There are some programming languages like R and Python which helps us in applying tools and techniques. So the aim of this project is only to predict the portability using classification of machine learning models. Literature survey. As you can see, here this is the literature survey. Assessment of water quality parameters are done by MJ Pavri and SM Gawande. Let's move towards data science life cycle. Data science life cycle contains business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, exploratory data analysis, data modeling, model evolution and model deployment. So the first one is business understanding. Business understanding means to understand the project objectives and requirements from a business perspective. Next one is data understanding. Data understanding is the knowledge that you have about the data. Data preparation. It is the process of cleaning and transforming raw data Uh, for processing and analysis exploratory data analysis it refers to the critical process of performing initial investigations on data so as to discover patterns and to check assumptions with the help of graphical representations data modeling it is the process of creating a data model for an information system by applying certain formal techniques model evolution it is the process of using different evaluations to understand machine learning model performance And the last one is model deployment. Model deployment is an iterative process in which many models are derived. Let's move towards the next slide that is working model. So tools I have used for implementations are Anaconda, Jupyter Notebook, Python, R, Google Collaborating. Libraries I have used are NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Scikit-learn. So the what what is NumPy? NumPy is a library for the Python programming language adding support for large multidimensional arrays and matrices along with a large collection of high level mathematical functions to operate on these arrays Pandas Panda is a software library written for the Python programming language for data manipulations and analysis in particular it offers data structure and operation for manipulating numerical tables and time series and it is a free software Matplotlib Matplotlib is a plotting library for the Python programming language and its numerical mathematics extension NumPy. It provides an object oriented API. Scikit-learn Scikit-learn is a sky scikit learn. So it is the most useful library for machine learning in Python. The Scikit-learn library contains a lot of efficient tools for machine learning and statistical modeling including classification regression and clustering requirements requirements are data set that can contain relevant information proper data visualization then selection of correct classification model and at the last calculating the accuracy of the result here is the data set i have used for build the model it contains 3276 rows and 10 columns Next slide is importing the libraries and data set. I have imported NumPy as NP, Pandas as PD, Matplotlib Pyplot as PLT and Seaborn as SNS. Exploratory data analysis. These are some data visualization methods you can see here on screen. Data visualization. Let's elaborate this step by step. Visualize the count of portability column using count plot of Seaborn library. 
then check the value count of our target future portability then visualize the portability using a count plot function of seaborn then second step you have to do is visualize the ph value using a dis plot function to check that it contains a normal distribution or not then third step is visualize all the features using histogram fourth step you have to do is visualize the correlation of all the features using a heat map function of seaborn library and last fifth one is a uh, fifth step you have to do is see the outlier using the boss plot function next is splitting the data set into dependent and independent variable data set splitting we'll see here first step you have to do is dividing the data into the dependent and independent feature all features are independent except portability as portability is our dependent feature second step you have to do is split the data set into the training and testing using the train test split function using return four data sets third step you have to do is apply feature scaling to the model to bring the values in the range of 0 to 1 so that uh, there is no big difference in the values in variable columns applying feature selection scaling the target value is a good idea in regression modeling scaling of the data makes it easy for the model to learn and understand the problem this is the applying feature scaling training model using different classification algorithm here are some models and their percentage accuracies so support vector machine embedded model is designed for predicting the quality of water which has the accuracy of 62.20% followed by nav bias model with the accuracy of 61.59% and then the kernel svm model with the accuracy of 67.53% the kernel support vector machine with the ideal kernel is the best performing algorithm with the highest accuracy than the other models as kernel spm model having highest accuracy we have used here support vector machine algorithm on our model to predict the quality of water and the accuracy that is about 62.20 percentage predicting the value we have to predict the value that's it so the conclusion is after trying and testing four different algorithms the best accuracy is achieved by kernel support vector machine that is 67.53% followed by knn that is 84.19% followed by followed by bias that is 61.59% and decision tree performed the worst that is 59.30% the tested algorithm would predict the water quality immediately based on the real time data fed from the iot system the proposed iot system would employ the parameter sensors of ph temperature parameter readings and communicate those readings the system only considers single dimensional inputs while there are more complex data set with many different dimensions for sequence in water quality monitoring Our future work will focus on the model optimized by combining the various water quality parameters and multi-dimensional inputs data set which will be used to predict the target parameters. With this I hereby close my presentation. Thanks for watching.